This video is being recorded on a 50 megapixel camera, which means around 40 quadrillion photons are bouncing off my face into the camera lens being detected, processed and saved as around 10 million ones and zeros every single second. The camera is such an incredible human invention, I wonder what we could use it for. Oh look, a dandelion must be the last one of the season. It's safe to say humans are a little bit strange, but there was once a time when we didn't have a camera to record ourselves for TikTok. Back in 1829, Joseph Nitafor Niepke took the world's first photograph, and here it is. Yeah, nice one buddy, where'd you get your camera from? Wish! Using modern image editing, we can make it a little bit clearer to show more details like this slanted roof, these windows, or this tree. But it wasn't until 1839, 10 years later, where photography became commercially available. And Robert Cornelius, a lamp manufacturer from Philadelphia, decided to take the world's first Facebook profile picture. This is what he did. Take a copper plate, coat it with silver, put it in a box with iodine vapour which chemically reacts to form silver iodide, put it in another box with a lens to allow light to focus on the plate, allow the plate to react to the light for 15 minutes, expose the plate to mercury vapour so the image becomes visible, wash the plate with sodium thiosulfate, then rinse with distilled water and gently dry it. Finally, coat the plate in glass to protect it from aging and boom, you have your picture. This was known as the Daria type method and it was used as the first commercial method of photography from the 1830s to the 1850s. But nowadays, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra has a 200 megapixel camera which can film in 4K at 120 frames per second and it fits on the back of a mobile phone. The fundamental idea is the same, but instead of focusing light onto a silver coated copper plate, light is focused onto a CMOS sensor, which stands for Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. In a 200 megapixel camera, the sensor contains 200 million pixels. Each pixel contains a micro lens, which focuses light through a color filter and a photo multiplier onto a photodiode. The photodiode starts eating the electrons, which scares the electrons away, so they start running through the wire, creating a current. Because the photodiode can only pick up light intensity, a color filter is used, which is either red, green, or blue. The filter blocks out other colors, so the photodiode can only pick up one color. Then, once the image is saved, the phone's processor can recompile the red, green, and blue values back into full color. Because the camera is 200 megapixels, the size of each pixel is around 500 nanometers in length and width. That's about the same size as the E. coli bacteria that's now on my finger. Come on, smell it. Smell it. The Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra has four cameras. A 200 megapixel camera, a 50 megapixel camera, a 12 megapixel camera, and a 10 megapixel camera. But why do they need so many cameras? And why don't they just put one super good camera on the back instead of having four lower resolution cameras? And what is the maximum megapixel camera that they could theoretically fit on the back of the phone? Nearly 60 years after the world's first photograph, a French inventor called Louis Le Prince created a single lens camera which was designed to capture motion by taking a series of pictures in quick succession. His camera used a roll of film paper which cycled through a new piece 12 times per second. But the film this time was actually a paper coated in a photosensitive emulsion which could capture a picture in just a fraction of a second. While the clip only lasts a couple of seconds, at least it's not as creepy as the world's first voice recording. The clip only lasted for two seconds because at the time film was only printed to a certain length. Anything longer would be prone to tearing because it was very fragile. Later in the 1900s, film got a little bit better because they could capture longer scenes. But in 1975, Stephen Sasson built the world's first digital camera, which used a CCD sensor to store images digitally. This camera captured images at 0.01 megapixels or 10,000 pixels and stored the images on a cassette tape. This is what they looked like. Fast forward 50 years and 0.01 megapixels is tiny compared to what we have today. 
But as it turns out, girls don't actually care that much about the size of the megapixel. It matters more how you use it because while high megapixel cameras can pick up much finer details, they actually struggle in low light conditions because they can't pick up as much light as the low megapixel cameras. They also often caused a lot of noise, which is where you see these sort of vibrating pixels around the screen because there's not enough photons actually hitting the pixels to form a clear image of the light level of that pixel. And maybe we don't want a crystal clear image all the time. Maybe sometimes we want a wide angle photo or a photo in low light conditions. But let's be real, it's a Samsung user. There's only one reason and one reason alone why they would use the camera on their mobile phone. Uh, yeah, Samsung. Yeah, look, see, I bought the 100 times zoom and <laughs> it's not enough. No. So what's the maximum megapixels you could get on a mobile phone camera? Well, a large one inch camera sensor is 13.2 millimeters times 8.8 .8 millimeters. And the smallest pixels currently available are 500 nanometers or 0.0005 millimeters in size. So the area of the sensor is 116.16 millimeters squared, and the area of each pixel is 0.0000025 millimeters squared. Divide the sensor area by the pixel area, and you get the number of pixels is 464,640,000 pixels or around 465 megapixels. And while this camera would capture very fine details, it would also consume a lot of power and it wouldn't work well in low light conditions. That's why current technology only allows 200 megapixels. Click this video if you wanna see more. Yeah, now bugger off.